Hey everyone! I uh, recently went back to China to go see my grandparents and while I was there, I not only had really good food but I decided to check out the local badminton gym and uh, take some lessons with the local badminton coach. Since the Chinese badminton team is so good, I figured that even the local badminton coach would probably be really good too, right? So my grandma found this guy and to be honest, I wasn't really expecting much because one, my grandma found him and two, he was coaching at the badminton gym across the street, literally. But he actually turned out to be really good and I was really pleasantly surprised. I showed him the video where I played singles against Paul and I shared my thoughts with him and he also shared his thoughts with me and we sort of agreed on a lot of things and also agreed on the points that I should be working on. And and I thought, instead of just keeping it to myself, um, I can make a video for it so I can share it with everyone else. So let's get started. So the first and probably the most important and practical thing that I learned was to have a low center of gravity. Um, you might hear this a lot and it might come in various forms like bend your knees or stay low, but they pretty much mean the same thing, which is to have a low center of gravity and this allows you to move quicker to where you're gonna go and also change directions quicker. Let's first start out with the benefits of having a lower center of gravity. First of all, when you have a lower center of gravity, it's easier for you to change direction. So let's say you're in ready position and you're anticipating that your opponent is going to hit your forehand net. So your right foot or your, your dominant foot is in front and your non-dominant foot is in back. But then they hit to your forehand backcourt. So you have to quickly change direction to have your dominant foot in the back. When you have a higher center of gravity, you have less to push off of versus if you had a lower center of gravity. Second, uh, something similar is when you're at the net, when you have a lower center of gravity, your knees are naturally bent so that when they hit a net shot, you can quickly kill the net. And when they lift, you can quickly push off and either quickly go back and jump and kill or just quickly push back and hit the next shot. Either way, having a lower center of gravity gets you to the birdie faster. Then when it comes to defense, there's this common theme of staying lower will help you push yourself to the shot faster. So when you're on defense, when you have a lower center of gravity, uh, it's easier for you to push off in the direction of the shuttle. And finally, something really interesting that the coach taught me was that when you have a higher center of gravity, the size of your step actually is smaller. So to get to the bird, you have to take more steps. Whereas if you have a lower center of gravity, you can take less steps, but bigger steps. So those were the couple things that I learned. Um, it's really apparent when you see um, Kento Momota play. Um, his center of gravity is like super low. What you gain in center of gravity, what you lose is the height of the shuttle because the center of gravity is low, right? So there's a trade-off um, in this evolving game of singles. Uh, it seems like it's more geared towards a fast rally and drives. So making the trade-off of having a lower center of gravity and having bigger steps and getting the shot faster and being more steady is uh, sometimes more favorable than just trying to reach for the highest contact point possible. So having a low center of gravity is probably the biggest thing I learned in China and it's something I'm still working on incorporating into my game. So the next thing I want to talk about is going up to the net and then going up like you're doing a net shot and then at the very last minute either doing a net shot or doing a push. And how I did it before was that I'd always go up sort of like like I'm going to push and then either pushing or netting but it seems like the Chinese way of doing it is to go in like you're doing it and then pushing. I wasn't too sure about this because um, there were some videos I saw where I think Lin Dan or someone like actually went in like they're gonna push in the net, right? So there's probably some variation to this. And even the coach said that there isn't really a right or wrong, um, but just learn it and then just consider adding it to your game or not. So the points that he made were that um, when you're doing the net, and then last minute you push, um, you're just using your finger power. First of all, the f your finger power is all you need to push it. And second of all, it's like really, really controlled and also really last minute. So they really don't know what you're doing until you actually hit the shot. Also, when Lin Dan played Chen Hong in like the All England back in 2006, I actually saw that he did the shot. Like, boom, I'll probably cut to it somewhere around here. Shuffle practically 
And yeah, so uh, it's definitely a thing that they did and might still do. The third quick thing I wanted to talk about was that um, when doing cross drops and cross smashes, um, he told me that sometimes it helps to just bring your elbow in when you're hitting. When you're bringing your elbow in, you can easily get the sh shuttle to a uh, good cross court. Whereas um, how I hit it was I would just hit it and slice it with the wrist instead of just bringing my whole elbow in. Um, he says that's like a very Malaysian style of thing to do. Um, I can't say I got it down, I can't say I do it all the time right now, but um, yeah, that's like another thing that I learned. So the fourth thing that I learned was this thing called the Lee Mao Step. It's like a special type of fork that uh, Lundan's old coach, who he has a lot of beef with now, um, invented. So basically, this is the shot where you hit your overhead, and let's say you hit an overhead drop or overhead smash, cross court, and then they net straight. So now you have to go from your overhead backward corner to your forehand uh, forecourt. Um, normally, this takes four steps. Uh, you can do like, you finish a shot, and then you have to shuffle twice, and then maybe cross once, or cross, 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 cross. Like, da, 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 da. I know that's like really hard to see, so maybe I'll cut a clip or something. Um, but basically, Li Mao invented this step where instead of taking four steps, you only take three steps. And how you do that is that in the middle, you sort of take this half step by jumping again on your left foot. And I actually saw the pros do this, uh, both Lindan and Kadoma Mota, so I'll just cut to those clips to show this footwork. But yeah, it was just pretty cool to see something that the local coach told me um, seeing the actual pros using the step. And finally, there's another thing that just made me have this aha moment. So the common advice is to step heel toe, right? So this whole time I've only been taught heel toe, heel toe, but actually landing on the outside of your heel lets you have a more stable recovery. And also in addition to that, um, landing on the outside of your heel also lets you take a bigger step. And the most interesting thing that I learned was that our badminton shoes are actually made to support this type of step. Like really, I'm not joking. If you take your badminton shoe and just look at the bottom, you can see that there are actually ridges on the outside of your heel to support this kind of step. So stepping on the outside of your heel, I think it's more for the extremely like big lunges. If you're just going for a normal lunge, you can just do heel toe. But then when you're doing like that, those really big lunges where you're pretty much doing the splits, it really helps to step on the outside of your heel because now you have your toe to push off of. And it sort of opens up your legs so that uh, you can just take that bigger step. But yeah, so those are the five biggest things I learned from the local coach in China. I feel like I learned a lot and it was definitely worth my money and definitely worth checking out. And he left for me a lot of things I could keep working on. Um, so it's really fun to also share these things with you. So, you know, he passes it on to me, I pass it on to you, maybe you can teach someone else. But I just want to say thanks for watching. Um, if you're watching all the way to the end, then I really appreciate it. Um, I'm hoping to start making more badminton related videos, so um, it'd be really cool to have your support. I also have a YouTube channel dedicated around computer science, and um, I never really asked for subscriptions or likes, but um, since I'm actually trying to grow this badminton channel and make it a thing, um, I'd really appreciate it if you could maybe share my videos or subscribe, but only if you found it helpful. If you didn't find it helpful, you should leave a comment and uh, tell me how I can improve. At the end of the day, I'm not who I am without badminton, so I'm just trying to give back to the community and maybe teach someone who doesn't have access to um, a coach because they're kind of expensive. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.